Okay, so if you've been a long time follower of the channel, you know that when I started this channel, my kind of whole point was to make cinematography more approachable for you at home. You know, I started by taking cheaper cameras. I think I started with the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, and I tried to prove that something that was only $1,200 could look like an Arri Alexa. And I did this by recreating scenes from Hollywood films. Now, the reason I did this is because I just, you know, I took small lights around the house. I took practical things just to practice lighting and show that to you. That was kind of the whole point. And I want to kind of get back to the basics here. You know, if you've been following the channel, I have been doing this short film series, but you know, I've been really getting the itch to shoot something and do something more cinematography related. Cause at the end of the day, I've been doing cinematography for 10 years now. That's really what my like bread and butter is. So I thought I would shoot a little scene today and then break it down. I'm gonna do something that's like kind of a trendy commercial vibe and then show you how I lit it and show how you can do some of these same techniques in your own house by yourself so you can start to learn cinematography better. Get it more ingrained into your head. And how I'm gonna do this is a little different. I think that a lot of people just like put up their lights, they show you why they put them there and stuff like that. But I'm gonna do this a little bit more raw. I'm actually gonna bring in my lights and then I'm gonna kind of turn them on, play with the intensity, and I'm gonna let all this roll on camera so you can see the difference. You know, if I say I'm at 20% power, what does that mean to you? That doesn't mean anything to you as the viewer when you're not behind the camera. You can't practice that yourself. So this might be a way for you guys just to get a better view of the application, like how I'm actually using lights. Like right now, I've got this Nanlite Forza 500 with the big four foot softbox, and it's like, I don't know, four or five feet from me right now, and that's what's lighting me right now. But if I bring that closer, you're able to see how that light gets softer. You're able to see that and hopefully better apply that to your next shoot. See how softness actually affects skin and stuff like that. And so that's how I'm gonna actually kind of do this lighting breakdown. So like I said, I wanna do something that's kind of like a trendy kind of commercial vibe, something that just looks cool, honestly, something that I just think looks cool. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna shoot on a full frame camera because full frame is big right now in the commercial industry. Um, and so I don't own my own full frame camera, but I borrowed a Sony FX3 to kind of show um, what this image would look like in the full frame kind of realm. And then I put my Canon FD uh, 24 millimeter lens on it here. Let's see, let's pop around over here. So we've got, oh, I've got my new seven inch monitor. You know, I, I had a five inch monitor before, but I've always wanted a bigger monitor. So I traded my friend for the bigger monitor because he just wanted something smaller. So we put the Canon FD um, 24 millimeter F1.4 on here. This is my converted lens, you know, um, it's got this, the whole like SIM mod kit kind of going on on it. You know, I've talked about that on the channel before. We've got the custom front caps, pretty fun. So vintage lens, I've got an ND filter on there because I'm gonna be shooting into windows. Um, and the idea here is that I'm gonna kind of use my, my living room here. We're gonna do some pretty standard stuff. We're gonna shoot into the L of the room to give us some depth. Um, we've got not a lot of color going on in here, so we're probably gonna add a little color using lights. But I think what I'm gonna do is haze the room, kind of make it real moody, darken it as much as I can using the ND filter. And then we're gonna kind of shoot a light from outside through almost like kind of a spotlight effect while putting a little wrap of soft light on my face. Um, as well as, like I said, adding that little back edge here that's gonna probably be some sort of colored light or maybe a TV light or something. I don't know yet, we're gonna play with that. Um, so let's get started. So some quick tips right out of the gate when you're shooting in a room with lots of window light, you might as well try to diffuse that light just to kind of block some of it and make it softer on anything that's happening in the room. That way you don't have to compete with it so much and it just looks more pleasant. So at my house, we already kind of have you know, these kind of basic shears on our curtains. Something like this or something a little thicker is really helpful when you're trying to make a space look nice and soft. I've talked about this on the channel before, but something to consider the next time that you walk into a house. Maybe just throw some shears in your car. Always have them there for your lighting setups. So I think my general idea here is that I'm gonna have the camera kind of over here I'm gonna be sitting over here with doing some sort of action, holding a remote or something like that. And then I'm going to have my light motivated from the window. Um, but I think I'm gonna have like a big slash of light coming in through here with the haze. And then I'm gonna use this as like a little wrap situation, just give myself a real nice key light. Um, and then we have got white walls. So there's gonna be quite a bit of light bouncing around. So we're gonna try to, you know, control that the best we can. And then also we'll probably put some sort of tube light or something back here to add a little color or maybe a little eye light up on the TV here. Um, so let me turn on the Sony and get this going so we can kind of start to see what we're getting in camera. 
So if we kind of look right here, we're gonna be using false color to really determine our exposure coming from the camera here. As of right now, we've got a little bit of green in here, which is a pretty good spot to be. That's kind of like your middle grayish area. Um, and then the rest of it's gray, which means technically nothing is peaking. We have some pink over here, so there might be a little bit of something kind of about to go over there. So we definitely need to control that. I do have an ND filter on. Um, it's probably at its highest intensity, which is this is like the moment kind of half ND. So it's not really doing all of it. Oh, I got right at like about an ND, ND eight-ish basically. Okay, so let's put me in the frame here and just kind of get an idea of what this looks like, just with the basic key light already on in the room. So I'm kind of sitting here. We're gonna go real wide with this. Let's try to get some sort of focus. Yeah, that's really fun. Super wide, kind of wild. Got a little flare over my shoulder here. We got to deal with that. We're shooting at like an F2, F1.4 here. Let's see. Kind of fun. We got a little ceiling action in there. Um, yeah, this actually isn't doing too bad right on my face. Let's check our false color here. Uh, we got a little bit of dark down here, but other than that, it's uh, decent. Let's see if we can see my face. Yeah, we got a little green on my face here. Okay, let's add another light. Let's start by kind of, let's start by taking a light outside with the aperture spotlight mount and really just beaming a light in here just to give it a cool effect. We might actually darken the image even more later in post, um, but for now, let's just kind of start with this. So in order to get a nice shaft of light, you're gonna need to use a different lighting modifier or some sort of cutter to cut the light in a straight way to give it kind of that beam. And that's where, the spotlight mount comes into play for me. The aperture spotlight mount here um, will make that beam angle about 36 degrees for us and kind of just um, really spike it into the towards the lens. So when using the spotlight mount, you actually want to install it on your C-stand first, and then you actually put your Bowen's mount light, it can be an aperture light or it can be a NAND light, whatever, and you want to install that on the back of the mount. So right now you can sort of see it out the window there, trying to compete with the sunlight here. So it's not gonna be great. So you can see that we've got the Amaran 200D attached to that. We've got it wide open, shooting right into the sun here. I mean, right into the window here. Obviously got power coming out of my house. Right now, you're not really gonna be able to see anything on camera because we don't have the haze. But once we add haze to the room, you'll really be able to see that shaft of light. We're just gonna make something a little wild and weird. I mean, commercial lighting is usually pretty over the top, so we're just gonna try that a little bit. I'm gonna darken all of this. Let's darken the image quite a bit to make it look a lot moodier and not like it's so bright outside. So you can kind of see that light there coming in now, but now let's add some haze to the room and then probably lower this key light and see what it looks like. Um, we've got this turned down to only like 20%. The Forza 500 is really bright. And we got a little light coming through there. We're probably gonna have to change the direction of that because right now you can see that there's light outside and we don't want that in our frame, do we? So let's kick on the fog machine here. This is just a $20 fog machine. It's not gonna give you the best looking fog, but let's just see what that looks like. Probably not great to blow it right up into the fan, but. Something with fog machines is you're gonna wanna remove your smoke detector, detector for this. So that's adding a little bit of like texture to the room, a little atmosphere. I wouldn't say we're getting a great shaft of light yet. Um, we might have to modify or might have to swap this 500 for the 200 here, just to get that extra punch. The 500 is gonna give us double the power. Um, so we might wanna try that. Okay, so I've moved it over a little bit. And then the reason that this is actually happening is because we're actually going through those shears and the shears are diffusing it once it hits the shears. So you can see why that's not having a profound effect. So if we pull these shears back, I bet we see a big difference. Now you can see that the light is uh, basically hitting me directly now. Um, we're still not getting a great shaft of light. Um, there's probably just too much light in the room to allow it right now, but I think we'll leave it for now and play with that more in here in a second. Here, let me move over here close to the camera, kind of get an idea of what we're working with. So if we're looking at this image, how do we want to make this image look better? Right now we're shooting the dark side of my face, which adds a lot of contrast. We've got most of our light coming from upstage here. Um, we got a kind of harsh light and then a soft light. So we're gonna have this wrap situation going. But now let's add a little color maybe. So if you look back um, behind me, we've got um, that little room back there with like 
this kind of door with the glass on it. Maybe if we put something coming from inside there, that adds a little bit more interest. Saw that on the camera, but this was actually only at 11%. Power, great lesson already. Check your power. Now we're at 100%. I bet we see something in there. But I'm still going to take another NAND light in there to really keep this light motivated from here, but push it farther into the room in there. So we've got this other four foot tube here. Now the first thing, if you come in here with this, like my, my vlog camera, you can see there's a lot of light. We're probably gonna have to start blocking some light coming from other parts of the house. Tube lights like this is that you can simply just like set them on a shelf somewhere or whatever you need to do. They don't have to be on a stand. It makes them really easy just to get a quick light up really fast. And they're four foot long, which gives them a little bit softer, a little bit more spread. They're not great like a four foot soft box like that. It's not gonna be perfectly soft, but it's just a really quick, easy way to add something like, so like this would be like a little edge here. So let's come into frame. So we can still see that one tube back there. So we're gonna have to adjust that. Mm, actually, you know, we need more power. I've actually ND'd down this lens a lot because I'm competing with daylight right now. If I was doing this at night, this would be already lit. This would be super easy to do. But because I'm trying to work in this kind of daylight environment, because it's just the time of day, we have some more problems to solve. And see, all cinematography is, is solving problems. See, I had an idea. I knew I wanted to sit in this corner. I knew what kind of lighting I sort of wanted. I wanted to motivate it from the window. I wanted to have a little color. So now I'm just trying to problem solve. I'm trying to get what I'm looking for in my head out onto the actual monitor. So what would we do? What would you do next to problem solve the daylight going on right now? We just need more intensity, simple as that. So I'm gonna break out the Aperture Nova, which has a lot more power than these NAND lights. I'm just gonna pump a bunch of blue into this room. An alternative would, to be, would be to bail on the windows. Maybe you don't wanna use the windows anymore because it is daylight or you could black it all out, something like that. But I'm just gonna kind of lean into it still just to give a little interest in the background. Um, and we'll just kind of keep that really dim in post when we're actually doing the color grading. I'm gonna take a quick coffee break to talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work online. As creatives, we all need a place to host our work, and I've been using Squarespace to show off my videos for the better part of a decade now. I started with one of their pre-existing website templates and then modified it to my liking. I changed my background to black to make sure my videos really popped on the website and were just viewed in the best format. And then I'm able to just embed videos from YouTube or Vimeo right into the site. Squarespace also reformats your website for mobile automatically, so you don't have to worry about things getting out of place on a phone. So if you're anything like me and need to present yourself online, you can just do that with Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off, and I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, after a little bit of thinking, I bet the Aperture Nova, it, you know, it's a pretty expensive light. Now I love the light, definitely have to keep it in my kit for what I do from a commercial standpoint. I need that power for a lot of stuff that I do. Just like this uh, NAND light 4 is a 500 over here, very powerful, I need that in the kit. But a lot of times you can't have that. So like these little NAND light Pavo tubes are not as bright, um, but they're super handy and they're much less expensive because I think you can get like two of them for like 700 bucks or something like that. So what if we just try to do that? So what I did is I've actually just moved one way closer, right next to my face. And because we have sucked so much light out of this room with the ND filter, it's not looking that intense being right next to my face. It just looks like a little bit of glow. So I think we're gonna leave that there and then maybe bring another one, bring the one that's in there out here and bounce it off the ceiling or something just to get that little lift rather than using the expensive Nova. Another thing I think we need to do, is if we're looking here right now, you know, this light here, is really hitting me in the face. And then our key light is adding just a little bit of wrap, but let's actually bring that key light in closer and give us even more um, wrap and softness. Because right now, because it is a four foot source and it is about five feet from my face, the subject here, 
um, it's not as soft as it could be. You know, one thing about lighting is like I've talked about this before, the bigger the source, the softer it's going to look on your skin. It's just the relative source. The closer that gets to me, the relativity of its wrap is going to get bigger around my face, creating a more pleasant soft light. So let's bring that way in just where it's not um, in the frame here and see how that looks. Okay, so you can see that it's right out in front of me now, maybe three feet from my face now. Um, and I had to kind of push it around a little bit more to make sure it wasn't in frame. It's probably doing what I want it to do. It's only at 10% power now because it is such a powerful light, but we're kind of getting somewhere right now. We've got a little bit of edge coming here, which I don't really like to edge on this side, but I want to have that blue effect. So more than an edge, it's more of like a blue fill instead. That's kind of what we're kind of playing with right now. We've got this light right in front of me. It's probably not, maybe making an eye light. Maybe that one's making an eye light. I can't tell by looking at the monitor right now because I'm looking forward. Um, and then we've got the one back there in the room. It's not doing a lot. Um, we could probably up that one a little bit, give it a little more intensity, justify this blue edge that's already happening here. The only thing I'm bummed out is the windows over here. <sighs> They're pretty bright. This doesn't look that believable when it comes to the windows. So I think in post, because we don't have control of it right now, the reality is we don't have control of it. I think in post, I will bring those down or window those. The thing here is actually having it spray across the wall a little bit. Before I had it right at my face, but I'm gonna spray it across the wall a little bit just to fuse it and get the intensity off my face. Let's see what that looks like on camera. That seems a lot better, less, you know, in, less intense, a little bit more believable. Now I think that I will bring that other tube in here just to justify it even more um, or something just to really bring up that kind of blue level just to give us that kind of commercial colorful vibe. Okay, so I've adjusted a few things here. I've made that Nanlite on the side of my face here spread across the wall so it's a little bit softer, less intense on my face. And then I've changed a couple lights behind me to really motivate that blue look. And I'm gonna show you that now. <laughs> So I put the four foot tube out here now. I mean, it's on the RGB setting, so it's kind of blue and it's spraying up into the ceiling here. And then I put a two foot tube in here, basically where that four foot was before spraying here, adding a little kick on this wall. And that is what's going to really sell. Maybe there's blue light over here for some reason that's gonna sell this effect. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the it's my go-to trick. It's the cinematographer's trick that everyone knows, but no one really notices in movies and on TV. And that's add a lamp. When in doubt, if you need a little extra interest, just put a lamp in the background. That's gonna help give you light and contrast and motivate light. Um, so we're gonna put a lamp in the corner here just to see what that looks like. Next time you watch the movie, see how many lamps are in the frame. It gets pretty funny. Something important when using a lamp is you're gonna to wanna to use a real incandescent bulb like this, or you're gonna to wanna to use one of these little uh, aperture B7 bulbs, I think is what they're called, that you can control yourself because otherwise you're gonna have some frequency issues. Um, you're gonna have some flicker from LEDs and whatnot. So I'm gonna replace this lamp's bulb right now with this incandescent bulb. Ah yes, check that out. Now we have a little bit of orange color contrast in the background, a little interest, something on the wall, um, I know it's kind of weird that it's daylight and we've got that on, but the, I guess the idea is that the outside is uh, kind of like the sun is about to set, maybe not quite orange yet. Maybe it's blue hour. We can fake that with the window real easily. Uh, we can even play with the white balance a little bit just to kind of make that a little bit more blue. Um, but this is looking good. We've got color contrast. We've got nice wrap on my face. I think this is turning out well. We've got the full frame camera, 24 millimeter lens, vintage with basically the apertures wide open. It's looking pretty fun. Okay, so what's something that would be in a commercial that would make this more interesting? Probably a VR headset. That'd look pretty cool. I've used that before, but it just looks so cool on camera. Let's try it again. So I definitely look ridiculous, but for the sake of the commercial setup, we're gonna do it. Look. So something else I like to do when I'm practicing lighting like this is I like to take the image that I just did, you know, kind of make note of where I put everything or maybe just leave it up. And then I like to throw my footage in the computer, start playing with it, start seeing what I've done wrong. And I can literally come back out here and test the things out that maybe I would have changed 
um, on the day of because I'm just sitting here in my living room practicing myself. That's something you can do too. Practice yourself at home, set up some lights, try to create a look yourself and then go make it. Problem solving and getting that stuck in your head is the way to become a better lighter and cinematographer yourself. You have to do the actionables. Well, at least I do. Backwards hats are never gonna work for me. They're just not, sorry. Okay, so looking at some footage here, a couple things that I noticed here is that I haven't used my 24 millimeter on a full frame camera yet. And I have a bunch of step up rings and adapters on the front of the lens. And it turns out it created a little vignette on the edge. We're just gonna call that a stylistic approach. But see, this is stuff that you need to be looking for and testing out your camera before you shoot. It's gonna look okay for this. We can even crop in a little bit on here if we want to. It's 4K, it's full frame. That's kind of the point. So some next things, we definitely do not have a light chef coming here. That's okay. What I do like is that there's a bunch of motivated light coming in on the, uh, on the couch here, even though we've really taken all that light out of the room, but now we actually have some of that justified there. This actually looks really quite real. And we have a little bit of an edge on my um, arm here, which I like, but yet we still have a nice little wrap on my face. I don't love the V, how this VR looks. Oh well, it's kind of fun. The blue look is definitely a nice commercial look and we still have that little lamp in the background. So some things I would change, I would fix the vignette. Obviously, maybe I would try harder to get that light shaft to come through. Also, what if we go back out there and try one more thing? Let's try a close up just to see how a close up would look in this environment and how we could maybe bring in that diffusion a little bit, the key light to make it even softer on my face and look more pleasant. So let's go out there. We're gonna do a close up like this. I don't think I'm gonna use the VR this time. Let's just use my face just to kind of get a different look. I swapped out the uh, front ring on here just to see if I can get rid of that vignette. Now we're gonna go in for a close up and stay on the wide lens and just kind of see how that looks here. Put everything back the way it was. I just need to add some haze. If you look at the last shot, the haze is moving all over the place. That's because the AC might've been on, but you really need to waft your haze and let it settle before you start filming, which I did not do. So we have it moving through the frame, but you know what, it looks cool, it looks fine. Um, now we know we've tested something, we practiced something, and now we know it's problem solved next time. So what's cool about close-ups is that you can bring all your light sources in and make them look a little bit softer um, and kind of be more pleasant on your subject skin, especially that's a good, and that's good for a couple of reasons because you're gonna bring that lens right up to my face. I mean, look at me, come on. Bring this right to my face. Let's help me out a little bit. Let's make it look more pleasant for the sake of my face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the soft box a little bit to make it a lot softer on my face and turn down the intensity and see how that looks. Okay, so the soft box is basically right in front of me. So there's not a ton of fall off on my face. There is quite a bit here, but it's not, so it's, it's supposed to be acting as a wrap, but that light outside is actually the thing that's really kind of just hitting me in the face and giving me a nice like, kind of eye light and an edge here, kind of separating me from the background. But what I like about this is that it feels like there's a source from over there, but it's wrapping all the way around rather than just being really flat with my face. Um, I'm not, normally I would use like a six foot light source. I would use like a shower curtain or a quarter grid or some sort of silk, but I really like the soft box for this scenario because it's very controllable. There's not light spilling all over the room and it's four foot. So it's pretty big and I can get it really close to my face right now. It's only a couple of feet from my face. Create a nice soft source on my face, which is very natural and pleasing.